and thank you very much for joining us. Hong Kong police have detained a prominent pro-democracy activist in a bid to prevent protests on the 32nd anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Cho Hang Tong was arrested from her office on charges of organizing unlawful assembly. The 37-year-old lawyer is one of the vice chairs of the group which organizes candlelit, candlelit vigils every year in the city's Victoria Park to mark the anniversary of the 1989 crackdown on pro-democracy protesters at Beijing's Tiananmen Square. Because they were found to have used the social media accounts to advertise or publicize a public meeting that had been prohibited, prohibited by the police. The vigil was called off this year as authorities imposed strict COVID restrictions despite virus cases very much under control. However, Cho had said that she planned to go to Victoria Park in a personal capacity. Cho's allies have called for her release. So we urge the police need to fully respect the rights and freedoms enjoyed by Hong Kong people under the basic law and also the Bill of Rights Ordinance and to release the Zhou Han Tong and another person as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the city's June 4th museum, which is dedicated to the victims of the Tiananmen crackdown, has been temporarily closed amid a licensing investigation. The museum, which is run by pro-democracy activists, is seeking legal advice. Well, with the uh, implementation of the national security law, uh, it can be very quick. It can be overnight. We don't know. Uh, we are trying to uh, measure by days uh, if they are going to uh, attack on Hong Kong Alliance, ban Hong Kong Alliance for its deed in the past. We, we can have nothing to protect us. Hong Kong's pro-China government intensified its crackdown on Tiananmen vigils amid its heavy-handed use of the national security law, which among other provisions covers sedation. Despite this, thousands of people turned up for the vigil, which was held last year. We on correspondent Richard Kimber is joining us live from Hong Kong. Richard, thank you very much for joining us. Can you tell us more about activist Cho Hang Tong's arrest? How long is she expected to remain in custody? Well, it's not clear at the moment. She's still there now and she's spoken through her lawyers to say that if she remains in custody for the rest of the day and cannot therefore come and commemorate the vigil in person, she said that she's promising to fast for the rest of the day as a sign of protest at her detention. Her colleagues from the alliance that organises the vigil that normally takes place uh, behind me here have taken great efforts to distance themselves from the types of comments that she'd been making where she'd been saying that the public have a right to come and commemorate today purely in an effort to try and prevent them from also being arrested. There is serious concern. I visited their offices this morning that her arrest may lead to more of that group all being arrested on the grounds that they've been encouraging people to try and commemorate the event despite the police's ban. Richard, do we still expect to see Tiananmen vigils in Hong Kong given that the police have uh, started cracking down on activists? Well, this really will be a, a litmus test, if you like, for how things may progress in future years. The space behind me, a huge open park in the middle of Hong Kong, in normal years, in a couple of hours from now, would be full of people. And by the evening, the entire space would be crammed with people holding candles and chanting their commemorative messages. As you can see now, there are barricades up, there are banners up, there are police everywhere. In the short space of time it took me to get here from the subway train, I think I must have passed more than 100 police officers just to stand where I am now. So a very very different mood from previous years and the acts of defiance that we saw last year with thousands of people coming out despite that police ban seems very unlikely this time around with such a, a more heavy-handed police presence already in place before people have even begun to come out. Richard, finally, how do we see the ban on Tiananmen vigil in the larger context of China's uh, crackdown on Hong Kong? 
Well, this is one of the most long-standing traditions in Hong Kong as a sign of the public coming together and trying to stand up for what they believe is one of the fundamental differences between Hong Kong and the Chinese mainland. There are no commemorative events in China for the Tiananmen crackdown, and Hong Kong has been the nearest place where such events have previously been allowed. So if this year's event turns into a more uh, permanent measure with the police never allowing such gatherings to take place again, it really will be a serious blow for what has been a long-standing way of Hong Kong standing up for what it believes are its differences between its statutory rights for the public here and those of people over in the Chinese mainland. So unlike other protest events that have happened in the past on the spur of the moment or rallied around specific political events, this one has happened every year without fail until a couple of years ago. So to see this end would be a serious blow for the pro-democracy movement and for all forms of anti-government activism here. Richard Kimber, live from Hong Kong. Thanks, Richard.